Guys, welcome back to Iris After Hours. I am here with my brand new co-host, the hey. one, the only, Pasquale. Yeah. And Fuieki. Yeah. You are my with nothing. Jamazu. <laughs> <laughs> we are live in Pemba, yeah. Mozambique, Africa, with another Aussie, Aussie, oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi, oi. The oh, one yeah. and only Steve Lazar. Steve, welcome to the show. It's great to be here. Thank you for your welcome, Nathan and Pasquale. Great to be here. Come Just arrived in Pemba this afternoon. And love coming here near the beach and love sharing about Jesus. Come on. Amen. Come on. Now, Steve, tell us the story. You run the original base, like from the Mama Heidi movie, That's like it. the rubbish jump. <laughs> this is like the early days in Pemba. But you took over the running of the base down in Maputo. Maputo. And it's called Zimpato, is that right? That's correct. Come on. Now, tell us, how did all this happen? When did you first connect with with sure. Iris? Well, uh, I was back at, when I was a normal person. I was a school teacher and I was teaching in Toronto, Canada when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit occurred in 1995. And if you uh, know Heidi's story, it's when Roland and her also began their ministry here uh, in Mozambique. And Heidi and Roland came to Toronto as thousands of other people did because uh, they were burnt out, tired, exhausted from what they were doing in the early years here in, in, uh, in Mozambique. And so every night at the church in Toronto, uh, there was a lineup of seven or eight people who shared testimony. And uh, this night, Heidi, who at that time was unknown, I suppose, just one of the nine testimonies, shared testimony about what God was doing on the streets of Maputo, the capital city. And uh, I was a career person and loved teaching, but uh, I knew enough of God that uh, when God speaks to you, he wants you to do something about it. So when Heidi spoke about what she was doing in Mozambique, uh, God pricked my spirit and uh, I knew that I had to do something about it. So after the service, in, uh, I went and spoke to Heidi, introduced myself, she gave me her email address and uh, we began supporting and uh, communicating with her right from the beginning of her time here uh, in Mozambique. It took us a couple of years, but we visited in 1998, uh, just when she moved to what was then her third base. If you remember in her book, she started at Shahunga, which is uh, the ex-government orphanage. They got kicked out of there when the government asked for the orphanage back. They moved then to Mashava, where we still have a base. And then in 1998, they moved from Mashava to where is Zimpeto, which is a suburb on the outskirts of Maputo, and they began to work there. We visited in 1998, and God was using that time to uh, convict us, my wife and I and our two teenage children, to uh, resign our jobs and come out full time uh, to Mozambique, which we did in 2000. At that time, we were working under Heidi and Roland. They were the directors of the base. And uh, as they began in 2003 to move towards Pemba, they asked my wife, Roz, uh, and I whether we would consider directing the base in Maputo, which we agreed to do. And uh, let me stop at this and say, you'll never take a nation until you take the capital city. Mm. And uh, Zimpeto, or Maputo, is the capital of Mozambique. And uh, we're there to take the city for Jesus. And so even though Heidi and uh, Roland have moved on, the work continues there in an amazing way, uh, right there in the capital city of Maputo. So Steve, were you freaking out when Heidi and Roland asked you to take over the base? Was that like huge? Um, it was huge because Heidi and Roland... I know, uh, legends. Legends. I mean, they are, to me, a mother and father of the faith. Absolutely. And, uh, it's, generals. God's generals. That's true. And so how can you follow them? Yeah. Um, you know, but I think God uses just ordinary people. Come on. And uh, to do extraordinary things. And I'm not trying to be hot in Roland. No. But um, they left us a great legacy. Hundreds of children. <laughs> and, uh, a literal legacy. A literal legacy. A foundation that we could build on. And hot in Roland are the other foundation builders. They're the pioneers. Um, 
I'm not gifted in the same way they are. Yeah. But uh, my wife and I have the gift of being able to uh, run a centre and being able to put meat on the bones. And Heidi and Roland left us an amazing structure, um, amazing fullness of the Holy Spirit. And we all just had the privilege of over the last 15 years now putting uh, meat onto the bones by bringing uh, godly order is what the term that I use there. Oh, come on. And it's wonderful for me to have Pasquale here because Pasquale yes. is Tell the, story the story of the ministry. I mean, you know, he was came into the ministry as a young child and now some 20 or more years later, uh, he's an instrumental part of the ministry. Come and that's our greatest, desire, our greatest joy to have young men like Pasquale and, and dozens of others who are following the Lord, serving Him, have developed skills and talents, and are using and wisdom. Hallelujah! Thank you for helping. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true, Pasquale. You are amazing, man. Your wisdom's fantastic. Thank you, Thank you man. Come on. Yeah, I, I don't know how much wisdom I have, but oh, you do. We talk to, all the time. Yeah, yeah. To hear that from you makes me. Yeah, I feel encouraged. <laughs> Come on, it's yeah. true. It's absolutely yeah. true. Yeah. So, yeah, have you got any stories about Steve Pasquale? Just true ones. Were you scared of him, yeah. Pasquale? <laughs> How old were you? Man, uh, I went to the base and I ran I ran away. Uh, I went back to the street. I did not even stay for a week, I think. Oh, when you first went there? Yeah, when I first went there. How old were you? I was, um, I think I was 14. Wow. When I went there, uh, when I went there first, but then, yeah, I came back in two thousand and two. That's when Papa C was um, was in charge, taking over. taking over. Yeah, it was the beginning. Like he was transitioning uh, from being a normal missionary to be <laughs> the leader of the, of the base. So, yeah, it was it was all good. Um, I, I wasn't really paying attention of read a mama hide is around or she's gone um like i was involved in like helping out i became uh, one of the room rooms uh leader Come like on. i would take care of one room as a chef uh that's how we call it here so that's the boss yeah chef. facilitate everything chief, yeah, chief. Means chief. Yeah. chief. <laughs> facilitate everything in the room and make sure I'm reporting what's happening in there, so that's what, the, what that's the role I had. But I'll leave Papa Steve to say a little bit about uh, And I remember after that, and I'm, I'm not so good at remembering the exact years, but about 2003 yeah. uh, or 2004, uh, for Pasquale and a couple of the other older youth, uh, we built them a house. Um, about two kilometres from the base, oh, across the, base. the road, yeah, of course. Yes. preparing them for the future. Yeah. And uh, Pasquale still has that house down in Mapuche. Mm -hmm. Do you? And, yep. uh, he I has, still have. <laughs> he's had family living there and now friends yeah. live in that house because part of our role is, is to prepare young men and women uh, for life after living um, on the base. Exactly, because mm. kids grow up, man. Yes. Kid, yeah. Childhood is a temporary thing. Yeah. As yeah. I'm discovering as being a father, it's like, it's going yeah. quickly. So I just want to remind you of something like, um, one day, Papa Steve and Mana Rosa, they came to our, 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 our room, like Camarata, the house that uh, we, the only people would live there were like from um like 15 16 all the boys, all yes. the boys. Yes. so i was in that in that group and then uh one thing um mana rosa said papa steve uh, his wife she said something about like encouraging us like as a as a young man now to really think about the future think about um maybe doing something or be in a community in order to experience life uh, outside the base. So after that, I was like thinking, uh, I was thinking so much about like how would that look like. And then I remember, I don't, th I don't know if it was like two days after or three days after. So I felt like God saying like, okay, um, you, you know, I think they were talking about you as well. Uh, but I think Papa Steve and Mama Rosa, they, were, they weren't ready to release me by then. Um, but at the same time, I heard from God, like, I, I should like, move um, uh, and stay on my own um, and then maybe. Uh, 
So in the midst of that, I went and I talked to Papa Steve and Mara Rosa. And one thing they told me, they said, to me, as a parent, they were thinking, man, what, what's happening? Like, is he ready to, <laughs> to face life outside of the base? Because many of us have left the base, but they did not do well. Yes. Uh, you know, and then I'm life, sure. yeah became really hard for them and then they, like, they fell in, into whatever brought them to the base. Yeah, right. So I, I, I told them I'm ready to go, but I'm not, I knew I wasn't ready, but I was trusting God. I said, no, just pray that God will bless me and all this stuff. So I went and I lived on my own. And then Papa Steve didn't know I was really serious to move to my house because they were taking care of me. Like they did, they were involved in so many things in yeah. my life. Um, so then they went to Australia and they left, left me with some duties, some tasks to do on base, uh, which was um, to do the uh, fireworks oh, for, yeah. for their Christmas. Uh -huh. <laughs> the fireworks. <laughs> the fireworks. So I was oh, the one. That's a pretty cool yeah. job. Yes, yes, I coordinated and I bought all this stuff and I went back to the base and then we did that. So I think it was the second of, of July, of June, of, of, of Ju uh, January. Yes. Where I said, well, I just feel like um, it's time. So I decided that I talked to the person that you guys uh, pointed as in mm -hmm. charge to the base. I think it was Papa Jim. Mm -hmm. He was in charge. I told him, you know, I'm, uh, I think I'm ready to go and they send you an email. You know, this this really amazed me to to know that Papa Steve really cared. My, Papa Steve and Mama Mana Rosa, they really uh, were so concerned about my life and really cared about me. So what they say? They said, "Well, Pasquale, why don't you um, leave everything that you own for now um, on base until you established where you're going?" And then, because I had some equipment, camera. And computer, because that's when that's the time when I was just got, I just got back from America, where we were taken to um, uh, develop some skills with sound system and photography and stuff like that. Oh. So he was concerned that would be uh, stolen, but I said no, I would take everything because I wanted to like be with my staff. So I did take everything, and they said on the other line, if if he wants, if anything happens and he wants to come back. Uh, please let him know that he's he's um, he's he's welcome to come back to the base. So I said, "Wow, that's amazing!" But I'm ready to go and face that life uh, of base, and I did. It's it's a beautiful story because it doesn't sound like I was kicked off the base. It just, <laughs> <laughs> there were like so many um, good stuff for God intervening and 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 shaping me and uh, in some ways. So I went there and then God just put his hand on everything that I did. Wow. And, and um, yeah, so I stopped there and yeah. it, it was a happy life there. Uh, I would visit and um, help play the drums because I was, I, was, I was playing the drums for the bass and also uh, run the sound ah. system for, for, for the church on the bass. Ah, so you were so running yeah. a church on the bass? You were running a church on the bass? Yeah, I was a part of um, a worship team. Come on. Yeah. So, so just to, to make a comment on what Pasquale was saying, Nathan, is, um, you know, Mozambique, unlike perhaps America and Australia, is very community-based. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we can live in Australia and not know the name of your next door neighbour, even though you live next to them. But in Mozambique, they're very community based. Yeah. So we built, we started building houses for Pasquale and other young men and women, girls in the community. But uh, we found after a while they got very lonely, having a house here and a house there. And so uh, shortly after that, we were given a block of land by the government. Um, in a wow. Back. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. That you were shocked. We were shocked. <laughs> But the government, uh, the government, we have a good relationship with the government. So that was like a recognition of, of the work you were doing? I think so, because they were really concerned about the youth. And so they gave us a block of land about 20 minutes from our centre and we began to build uh, houses for our young men. Uh, small houses that they could either live with another young man or if they got married with their wife. Yep. And so today, in 2017, we have uh, 23 houses on that block of land. No way! So the house, yeah. it's their own house, but they live in community. Yeah. So there is a, a small church on the property, there's a pastor who lives there, 
but each married couple or two young men live in their own house, so they're still part of the community. Because some of the young men and women, as Pascal was saying, got out into the community, they got lonely, they got into trouble, and uh, we found out that they really missed being in community because that's what Iris is about. Yeah, yeah about absolutely. Community. And I think that was one reason that uh, Pasquale ended up moving then to Pemba was because he again wanted uh, to pursue his love of photography and the media, yeah. but also again to become part of, of community. Cool. So yeah. it's a great story. Yeah. And um, about you said something about uh, government recognition. Some, yeah. yeah. I, I remember myself working for the magazine. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And the honor of the magazine, it was during the uh, World, World, World Cup um, in 2010. Mm -hmm. So what he did, Papa Steve was back from Australia by then. He, he, he heard my story because I told him that Mama Heidi was asking me to come to Pemba and I was about to quit the job. So he asked me, what is making you really quit the job? Um, if you have a good job and you have like other extra jobs that people ask you to do and you're making lo a lot of money. I said, well, this person is the one that took me from the street. Mm. You know, I was a street boy. So he's like, what? What are you talking about? I said, yes, I was a street boy. Yeah. Uh, you know, I reminded him of the places that yeah. we were uh, mm. mostly hanging out. And he's like, no, I can't believe this. And where is that? So I told him that, you know, about the base, about what the base to do um, uh, for the kids and how the process goes. So the guy, the magazine guy, he went and he met with Papa Steve and he wanted to know, um, mm. and he did some report about Iris and he brought like a big um, TV screen mm. for the kids to watch sure. the World Cup. Yeah. Oh, so the there was a recognition as well of oh. like, and it's on the magazine still today, um, that, that, um, that, yeah, that episode. Mm. So it's like, yeah, you know, some people, they just need to hear about what mm. God is doing mm. and, and then, yeah, from that, they, they, they feel motivated to uh, co-participate -par -par and, yeah. uh, and, and help out. Yeah. So that was beautiful to me too, to have that happening. Yeah, that's a good, that's yeah. very true, Pascal. So how many children do you have on the base now, Steve? Well, in, when Heidi and Roland left in 2003, we had 550 children. No. As people who know Heidi and Roland, they're extremely big people. Yeah. And uh, they love big hearts. Big right. hearts. So you won yeah. the I was one of them. It was packed. <laughs> it was packed. But uh, yeah, we. Do you have a yeah. lot of beds? So you had beds for Yeah, double bunks kids? and yeah. children on the floor and children yeah. in the hallways. Rafters. <laughs> oh, packed to rafters. the rafters, mate. Uh, shortly after that, we began what we call now it's a social welfare program. Uh, we call it reintegration. And we now employ four full time social workers. Wow. that uh, five days a week are investigating families of children who live on our centre. So in 2017, we have 250 children. So in the last 15 years, we've uh, put 900 children back into houses wow. and we've brought 600 kids in because we don't believe that poverty is a reason to separate mm. a child from the family. Come on. So we spend a lot more of our resources um, building houses, giving food, giving free education, which keeps the child with their family. Yes. We only bring children in if they come from, if they're sick or malnourished or perhaps from an abusive or mistreated situation. Yep. And our social welfare team helps to assess that situation. All of our social workers are Mozambicans come because on. they know the culture. Yep. Uh, and they investigate with the families, with the neighbours, with the chefs of the areas and then we make an assessment and we will do almost anything to keep a child with their family. And that, and that, and that would include keeping children with, uh, grand, if they don't have parents, yep. uh, with older brother, older sister, grandparents, uncles, and we would support them in their family. And that's why we now have only right, 250 children who mostly have nowhere to go. And so right. they live yeah. full time with us. But what ages are the, are the kids from? Do they have to leave at a certain age? Well, the government law is 18. Right. Uh, so we have um, 40, uh, 45 babies that are under two. 
What? Soft 45 love, yeah. babies yeah. under yeah. two. So after love That's babies, come and visit us. Yes, can people come? People can come. We have a visitor program. Is it on the Iris website? It's on the Iris website. And uh, we have, uh, last year we had about 700 visitors coming in. Wow. I've uh, just left this morning. We had a team of 20 from my home church in Australia visit. But we have about 700 a year come. They come for two to three weeks and they do lots of activities on the base yep. with the children. Uh, with our academic school of 1600 and then they also hang do... Hang on a minute. Yeah. You have a school of 1600 kids on base? <laughs> Not as many. Pem has 3000, but we're 1600. <laughs> That's because they double up. They do a morning yeah. class. Do you do the same thing morning and afternoon? We have 800 children in the morning, primary school age, and then 800 in the afternoon. And again, we try to choose the children who otherwise would not get an education. Yes, yeah, so a lot of the surrounding neighbourhoods. Yeah. So all your all your kids go. You're all our kids go, yes. well, except the forty five babies. That's right. <laughs> and about fourteen hundred from the community go. That's it's wonderful. amazing. And it's a wonderful evangelism opportunity. Of course. Because most of the kids who come to school are unchurched. Yep. And so we get a captive audience. We do religious instruction in the classroom, and we do chapel services yeah. and kids give their lives to Jesus and we present the gospel right on our base. Come on. Uh, that's a great outreach. Wow. Yeah. That's so. amazing. Yeah, it's, and do you have a, do you still run the church on base? We have a church. Uh, we work together with uh, the Partners in Harvest or Communion called the Church. Yep. Under Pastor Jose. Also, we have a Pastor Jose. Oh, Pastor like Jose. I love Pastor Jose. <laughs> and, uh, we, and the church, we have church services uh, Thursday evening for our children. Sunday is a community service. And uh, I don't know, on a Sunday, maybe seven or 800 people come to church. What? Yeah. That is huge. Yeah. And people say to me, well, people come to your church because you give them lunch. <laughs> and I say, that's right, because they're hungry. Yeah. And we've had people come for many, many years to church and they love to have lunch. Yeah. And some of those people have also given their lives to Jesus. Yeah. So when we look at the ministry of Jesus, people who were hungry, yeah. he fed them. He did. Food. Plenty of stories about that in the good book. And he yeah. shared the good news of Jesus. And yeah. that's what I love. And everything we do in Iris, we give away clothing, we give away food, but we always present the gospel of Jesus. Come on. Everything we do. And that's, that's what Jesus did. And uh, it's a great privilege to be there. Wow. And how important is that, is the church life too, for the kids that are living, those 250 kids that live on base? Well, we're very careful because, as you know, uh, well, we probably have church, some type of church service, maybe four or five days a week. Wow. By the time they have home group and they have the children's service, we have a school service, they have youth group and they have Sunday service. We're really careful to make it uh, sometimes not too long. Yeah. Try to keep services relevant for children because we want them to fall in love with Jesus and have their own relationship with him. We're yeah. not looking at making Pharisees or religious people. Come on. And so it's a balance. Yeah. But, uh, you know, of the hundreds of children who've been through Zimpeto, a number of them, when they leave the centre, they leave Jesus at the door. But there's also an equal number that yeah. take Jesus with them yeah. and live full and uh, victorious lives. Uh, following Jesus, and that's our desire. Come on. Him. How about for you, Pastor? Was the church element important on the base life? Yeah, like myself, when I came back the last time uh, to the base, um, I came during the conference season. Ah. So there was a conference happening uh, when Mama Hyde came with me and other kids from the street. And the first thing they did was dedicating me in front of everybody. <laughs> so they all prayed over me. I think you saw that video. Yes. Uh, yes. That yeah. Video. So I am, I am there like being prayed of and things like that. And then slowly, slowly, I became a part of, um, of the worship team, yeah. which built, built me more. I wasn't perfect, but I had some skills that I would help out. I would yeah. clean the church. I would. I would organize the chairs or the benches because that's what we had uh, uh, years ago, and that kept me built. That built me up uh, in some ways of knowing, like, uh, to serve. Yeah. Like unconditional service. That's what I learned first, and then. So good. <laughs> you know, and then I kept like serving. You know, I did not receive any money 
but I know Papa's like Papa Stephen, like he would freely maybe sometimes bring give us some money just to buy clothes to because yeah. we were like a little bit older in comparison to other kids and sometimes we had to go somewhere where you know uh, it's an important place is where we need to dress well so we had that all oh, that favor also happened oh, to us but real, the, it's a real papa, yeah, isn't it? it's a real papa so really the church was a <laughs> very important uh for my life because yeah. that's where i started uh serving and then also taking ca uh, care of other kids in a way that I would disciple them, I would read a Bible verse, even though I wasn't, really, I didn't know the Bible very well, yeah. but I would read the, that one verse and then Come on. preach the whole sermon. Quite well. I, mean, I mean, most of the verses yeah. are worthy of a whole sermon anyway. Yes. So I mean, that book's amazing. Man. It is amazing. So that's where I started from, um, um, like unconditional service. Yeah, that's wow. where that's what I started from. But uh, I just every time uh, I'm like involved in the ministry, I'm like I'm so thankful for the grace of God. Like the grace of God is one thing that I'll never oh. I'll never uh, set apart. Like it's a part of my journey, and I'm yeah. I'm living my life. Uh, there is a scripture that says we walk, you know. Uh, from glory to glory. Oh yeah. yeah. Myself, I also want to say on my own words, like I'm walking from grace to grace. Like in everything I get to do, I see the grace of God, and um, and um, um, yeah, I'm so thankful that that grace was manifested through through Papa Stephen and other leaders. Like I wasn't the perfect boy. <laughs> <laughs> we went to we're we're gonna hear some of those stories. We're going to get some of those stories soon. After. Yeah, stories. after. Right now, yes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be perfect right now. <laughs> but that's amazing that you learn to serve. I mean, how important is that in your walk with Jesus? Is Because Jesus came not to be served. He said, I didn't come to serve. I came to serve. Yeah. And, and that's a part of what we need to learn as his kids. Mm -hmm. As Jesus. And even all these years later, I mean, Pascal has been uh, now in Pemba for five years or more? For seven. Seven years in Pemba. We, we really believe it's important for all the kids to serve. Um, for example, um, we now have 38 students studying at university. Yeah, and 38. They're, and they're all, most of them are, are sponsored by people all over the world. Mm -hmm. But in order for them to go to university and their fees are paid, they have to work. Yeah. So they all work at the base part time. It could be working in the kitchen, yeah. uh, it could be driving, it could be constructing, yeah. so that they can earn some money to live, but also um, so they know that although they're being sponsored for university, uh, you also have to serve. Yeah. And uh, we've got our first students now. We've had four students this year graduate from yeah. business finance, and we have a young man finishing medicine. In, wow. Uh, and these are young kids that nobody yeah. cared for. Which is you know. which is Luis, yeah. Erminio, Dalberto, yeah. yeah. and, um, and Domingos. That's right. Yes. Right. And it's exciting because... You know all those guys? Yeah, yeah. they're all, all my yeah. close friends. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we're keeping up. And I love that verse, Nathan, in Psalm 113, where it says, um, he's lifting the poor out of the dust to sit with kings and princes. Yeah. Whoa. And you know, the privilege oh. about s serving somewhere long term, I mean, we have a lot of staff who were there many years, the privilege is you see children come in who may have been um, mistreated, uh, maybe have never been to school, and 10 years later, 12 years later, they're finishing school, yeah. they're going to university, cool. they're getting married, they're building a little house, they're getting a job, and they're serving Jesus, and wow. to me that's the greatest Oh my God. miracle of, 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 uh, of serving Jesus is seeing young men and women live a full life just like you know we want to for our own families and our own children Absolutely. and serving Jesus. Wow. It's very exciting and I feel, my wife and I, we feel extremely privileged that we've been able to stay for so long and see a generation, uh, you know, come, come right through if you like to the, and now be flying as they say. So can I get those stats again of how many kids have come through the base? Well, I did some statistics last year because the government asked 
Um, when, when, when the ministry began, or when we arrived at the ministry, there was 550 children. Since then, we've uh, put 900 children back into houses. Wow. And brought in 600 new children. On top of that, 550. That's right. So that's why we now have 250. Right, yeah, because 1150, yeah. 900. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And Gosh. so we, we pray that those, or a couple of thousand children's lives will have been touched yeah. by the love that they receive and, of course, by the love of Jesus because that's what it's all about. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Now staff, how many staff do you have there? Because you, yeah. you, you and uh, Rosa, don't run this Ross. by yourselves, do you? <laughs> no, hallelujah. Is it Ros? Ros? Ros. Ros. Uh, we have uh, a big staff. We have 25 long-term missionaries. 25 long-term missionaries? They come from all over the world. All over the world. And they serve uh, for a minimum of a year. And we've had a number that have been there 10 years and plus. Uh, we have 160 uh, Mozambican workers wow. who are all on uh, salary and they run anything from school teachers to administrators, uh, drivers, kitchen workers, child carers. And then we have about 90 other staff that include pastors, uh, youth that serve in the church and serve in the community. They also receive offerings. So it's a miracle because... Uh, uh, you know, the number of people who we serve, the number of people we help every day, we feed 800 people every single meal, and God miraculously <laughs> provides. For, wow. for more than 20 years now, we've, uh, we've served people, loved people, paid salaries, um, helped 400 people in our clinic weekly. Oh, you have a clinic as well? We have a clinic that, and that's all done because generous people all over the world give. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then we give it away and wow. touch thousands of lives. You know, what a great joy. So beautiful. How big's the property? Is it like similar size to the base here? Is it bigger than? Uh, no, I don't think it's bigger. So um, I haven't about? got the exact measurements in my head. It would, it would be about two thirds the size of the Pemba base. And we have a, a wall around it. We have a school, a small Bible school. Um, we, don't, uh, we don't have the harvest school in there, no. but we have, if you like, we have a lot more children. We have 250. Yeah. So it's the basis. 45 full. babies. I can't believe it's so many babies. <laughs> Come and adopt All the babies. All the girls out there are going, I'm going, I'm coming. To I'm going to hold 45 babies at once. People love <laughs> Yeah. The babies. Gosh, yeah. I want to go down and load up with babies. Just... You're about to just more than open. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. First, the first lady was just there and That's she right. visited the, the, the babies. That's right. And she was very uh, compelled by that. Really? Yes, she was. Yeah, it was great. Gosh. Yeah. We've got to drop. I've never been. I can't believe yeah. I'm coming. Yeah. Next time we come, I'm going to drop in. Yeah. You must come, Nathan. Yeah, with yeah. Sarah. And I'm going to bring the boys. Yes. Yeah, it's an amazing place. I mean, Iris is an amazing ministry. And whether you're visiting Pemba or Maputo or whether you're visiting one of the bases, it's amazing to see the breadth and the depth of Irish ministries. It does reflect the DNA of Heidi and Roland, but each base is different by its nature, by its size, by the leadership of the base. Yeah. But it carries the, uh, the Irish DNA Come on. and uh, lifting the poor out of the dust, being yeah. generous and seeing God change lives. Come on. The gospel yeah. of Jesus Christ, man. Amen. Yes, so I have this question. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Papa Steve, you know, when, when Mama Hyde left in 2002 to, to come to Pemba, uh, the, 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 the base was a little bit different in the way people would react um, uh, in terms of like application of like uh, structure on the base. Uh, mostly the kids, uh, those that were close to Mama Heidi. Um, the reason why I'm asking this question openly is because I've seen you, like you carry the DNA of Iris, you know, uh, it's there. And I've, I've watched you all these many years. But what I want to know, how are you like different? You, you operate differently, but at the same time, you keep the DNA of Iris and you still, you're a godly man. Mm. You trust, you, you're like so focused on God. And you have this group of kids um, uh, that you, you, you adopted mm. as your own uh, kids and to be their papa, like, and to like mm. help them with, oh, with all their needs. Like, so what I want to know is that 
how did that happen that to be different but still sure. on the right uh, track of, of having sure. Iris Dania? Yeah? That's a yeah. good question. <laughs> That's well. I mean, for, for most of the viewers or, or, or people who, who watch these podcasts, they would, they love Iris because they love Heidi and Roland. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I came to Iris because I heard Heidi speak at a conference. Yeah. And Heidi and Roland are extremely attractive people in the way they present the gospel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so Iris will always have Heidi and Roland's DNA. DNA, that's right. At every single base. It, yeah. it must reflect their vision and their passion. Mm -hmm. But the gifting that Heidi and Roland have is unique, mm -hmm. and they don't expect the people who follow them to copy them. Yes, yes. And so Heidi and Roland, I remember when Pemba was, uh, was first looked at, yeah. people said you could never do anything in Pemba. Yeah. Don't bother <laughs> yeah. going there. Yep. It's too hard, it's too rough. No one, uh, no one will receive no it. No one will receive it. It's Muslim based. Yeah. And uh, Heidi and Roland, as you can see 20 years later, there are thousands of people mm. in this area that have come to know Jesus and they have. Absolutely. Yeah. And they are gifted. Yeah. But nobody has all the gifts. Yes. And Heidi and Roland are pioneers. Mm -hmm. And they've, the, the gifting they have is to bring other people in yeah. that can, I use the word, are settlers. Mm -hmm. I could have never come and established a base in Pemba, but Heidi and Roland could. Mm -hmm. But as I said at the beginning, my wife and I can put meat on the bones. We can get the school running well. So we can employ the teachers and mm -hmm. get a good headmaster. <laughs> get, because Heidi and Roland are on to the next project. Yeah. They're pioneering yes. in Pemba. Now they're looking at the University of Marangonia yeah. because that's the gifting. Mm -hmm. And then they bring people that can hold the ground that's been won. And so I didn't try to copy them. Yeah. And it took a little while for the staff and the children to get used to. Yeah. We're not doing it exactly the same way that Heidi and Roland used to because I'm not them. Yeah. And I think all these years later, uh, I don't ask them what they think, but they they love and they respect, they honour. Yeah. And we work Absolutely. together in a really, I believe, joyful environment. Yeah, amen. Wow, that's a great answer. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. Now we want to hear the stories of when Pasquale was a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, oh, well, I don't know if you remember no, uh, any stories. I've forgotten. Well, oh, oh, he wants me to, to share them. Why was he forgive and forget? But I, I, I remember. Oh, a good father. Yes, you are a good, good father. father. But I remember, like, I had two problems that were, like, the highlight where I punched, uh, like, one of the boys uh -huh. that. Bright, bright, bright kids nose. Oh, did you break and he, nose. Yeah, he ended up in the clinic. <laughs> and that, that, you know, when I talk about grace, I mean, like, it, it's like, he really helped me out. <laughs> Most of the kids, <laughs> like, well. like, normally, I would have been kicked out from the base. Mm -hmm. I was older, and I punched this kid, uh, this, we were almost like the same age, mm -hmm. I think. But, you know, I punched him and I broke his nose. And then Papa Steve was we had to be in the middle of it, and I'm not laughing. <laughs> I'm not laughing. yeah, I'm like, why, 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 yeah, he was like he didn't know how to read him. Uh, I think they prayed over it. Uh, I remember all the staff, Mana Laura, she was uh, the the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the the one that was looking after the uh, our camarada, which means the house that um, she was helping and with the sponsorship and all this stuff. So they were all praying over this situation and over me. Like I say, they really cared about my, myself, like to the point, like I remember all these stories. So that was one of the stories uh, that happened. And the next one was that I wounded this boy that couldn't really even walk. And it was a terrible story, but Really, Papa Steve, uh, they were gracious to me. They were thinking uh, like about my future, not yeah. like the present uh, uh, situation. And I'm here today. Uh, the man I've become, the, the you know, the young man I've become, because they really were and the love of Jesus. The lo yeah, the love of Jesus, and yeah, it's the love of Jesus in and, them. And going the extra mile. And uh, yeah, and then they gave me a chance. Come you on. know. 
there's something about the second chance, the third chance. I'm not talking about the second chance. I'm talking about many chances That's that true. I had. <laughs> seven <laughs> times seven. I feel like God is towards us, huh? Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I will, yeah. That's yeah. that's all I would say. But I still love Papa Steve. Every time we meet, it's like, you know, we have this conversation, we forgive each other. I don't know how many times I have to go forgive Papa Steve because there's nothing I see that I have to go forgive him. He had a lot on him. But anyways, and a lot of people would, yeah, have, uh, wanted a lot from him and that he didn't have sometimes, but yeah, so I really respect him so much, and in that sense that, yeah, they they are father and a mother, Mana Rose and Papa Steve. Come on. So I bless you, Papa Steve, as well. one yeah, of the pro, one of the heroes in my life. Yeah, yeah. God bless you. Thank yeah. you. That's well. So, gosh, it's so incredible to yeah. see this. Yeah. Like you know, that's why I keep there and yeah, everything you part and you're st still going, and it's like. Yeah. It's huge. It's, it's a miracle. miracle. It is yeah. a miracle. Yeah. It's a miracle. Yeah. And it's all people give money and it happens. It's like straight out of the heart of God, really, isn't it? Yeah. It is. And and uh, what amazes me because uh, because Iris Ministries doesn't do things the way that I believe any other ministry does. It prays a lot. Um, it doesn't okay. put out envelopes or requests for finances. Mm -hmm. No. It simply tells the story of what we do. And I had no idea what the budget for Irish Ministries is, but you know we're helping thousands and thousands of people all over the world because generous people give. Yeah. And um, and and we're able to help young men like Pasquale or children through university, yeah. or, or or widows' houses, or, or build the university, or build the university, yeah. because we serve a miracle working God. Just along that line, Nathan. While I remember, we've just launched. Yes. Um, Iris Australia. Iris Australia, mainly because Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, Aussie. Oi, Aussie. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. I got it. Nathan's half Australian, you can't believe it, but he really is. <laughs> and uh, it was a, a miraculous the last few months. We've worked with an accountant in Australia, and Iris, uh, Iris Global Australia has now been launched. Come and that on. means uh, that if uh, people want to give and get. Uh, uh, tax breaks and tax receipts in Australia. in Australia for Australians. They can do so through, um, it'll be on the Iris Global website as well as there's an Iris Australia website and that people can give and it will go towards the same things that you've been giving towards so good. but you can get a uh, ch charitable status and get a tax deduction for it and that's Come miraculous. on Aussies, come on Aussies. Yeah, so, <laughs> It just gives come more opportunity. On, Aussie, come on, Aussie, come on. Come on. Nathan, are you still, are, are you still a Aussie? Yes. Really? Yeah. Oh, I just thought you just became an American. I know, I got the flag. Like, well, I am. I'm, <laughs> it's I, like, I'm dual. Oh, no, yeah. dual, mate. Dual citizen. <laughs> dual? Like, dual? No. Oh, dual. Dual. Oh, dual. No, yeah. Americans get mixed up when I say dual citizen. Like, dual citizen? <laughs> right? Is there a country that's like a treasure and a jewel? Oh, no, dual. Ah, I do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> They're both. And yeah. my boys are both, Sarah's both. So Sarah's That's actually cool. three. She's English and Australian and American. Whoa. Yeah, so when, I, when, we, when we travel, I get to travel with 11 passports for my 11. Wow. <laughs> wow. Anyway, amazing. thanks. It's wonderful to be able to share the good things that God's doing, not just in Maputo and Zimpeta, but across the whole Iris Ministries family. Yeah, it's and that's crazy. why we're glad to be here yeah. this week in Pemba to meet some of the heroes who are in, yeah. some of them in very small ministries, in tiny countries, but are serving Jesus, yeah. using the flag of Iris, but it's yeah. serving Jesus. And, and uh, what a great God we serve and what an amazing ministry we're part of. Wow, wow. absolutely. Into that. So incredible. So guys, come and visit the base. Look on the website, come and visit. Now, I've just got to finish. Before we finish, we're going to get you back to the um, global meetings that we're having here right now, Steve. But I've got a question. I'm going to ask both of you this question. Okay, I've got four Ooh. questions. <laughs> favourite movie? You too, Pashkar. Favourite movie? Happy Gilmore. Oh, a lot of questions. Oh my love God. it. I love that. My son knows the whole Happy Gilmore movie. He can <laughs> say, he doesn't know what seven times eight is, but he knows Happy Gilmore. Love Happy Gilmore. I, I do admit, I must admit, I love that yeah. humour. 
I need to get a, get a copy of that so I can watch it. Let's watch it tonight. Oh, I'm thinking, blink, 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 blink. Well, I love uh, movies about history. Come on. So I would say, like history-wise, I would say Amazing Grace. Oh my gosh, I love The Amazing Grace, I love that. How good that, is that film? Oh, that's amazing. So I've watched it. You're so time. spiritual, Pasquale. <laughs> I know. Happy Gilmore, Amazing Grace. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> you're, showing, but, you're showing up the old man. But let's, let's, let's go back to, okay, um, I love movies about dance. Come on. So I, yeah, yeah, I love dancing and I would say um I love the move uh the step up oh, two. Oh yeah, step up two. Step up two, yeah. Come on. I love that movie. Yeah. Because you're a dancer, man. I love to dance. So Come on, we're gonna yeah. bust moves out here. Man. Yeah. <laughs> really? <Ooh. laughs> the dance podcast. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have Papa Steve here as this favorite move every time there is a dance. Yeah, here he's gonna show off. Now the next question is classic. If you could do a different profession, right, dream and anything you wanted, what would it be? Hmm. Jesus. Jesus? Jesus? Wow. No, I'm, no, no, I'm just saying Jesus in like, no, what a question. That's what I'm trying to oh, say. Oh, right, no, I'm saying, I want to be Jesus. That's no, right. I'm saying, answer. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, what a question. So Jesus showed up. Come on. Well, um, Pelosi, you want to go first? Yeah, um, once Maputo is saved, I'm going to join the Seniors Golf Tour. Oh, yeah. That, that's what that I'm going to do. Yeah. yeah you that's like my golf? Dream. I love golf. Wow. So Maputo's almost saved. Once they're done, I'm going to join the golf tour. <laughs> we'll see you on television. Come on. Oh. I love golf almost as much as I love Jesus, but... <laughs> He's above there. I'm just joking. Yeah. Well, myself, I'll just go back to basketball. Oh yeah. Like help uh, kids minister minister through basketball. Come on. I think that's one of the things that um, I come alive when I do it. That's um, come on, we need to shoot some hoops, man. Yeah. So I have some over there. I just need to set up. Um, I need to get, bring you a basketball every time we come out. There. Yeah, let's do that. Come on. So yeah, I would, I would, I would help. Uh, kids uh, with basketball and just minister through that. I love basketball. Yeah, not about competition, but about yeah being a team. Come on, you know. So that's what that's what made our kids even win all these games. Papa Steve is a witness for absolutely of that. So it was amazing. Do you guys have a favorite sound? Sound. What does that mean, Nathan? Well, like sound. I love the sound of bellbirds in Australia. Boing, boing, and it sounded bellbirds in the bush. I don't yeah. know, it could be music, it could be anything. It's a very curious question. I love the sound of the sea. Oh my gosh, we got that one the other day, isn't that amazing? Yeah, nothing better than the waves crashing on, on, the, on the shore. Oh. Lovely sound. Man, I love the sound of the birds. They come every time at my house, and they even poop, and uh, <laughs> they make their, their things over there. Can we have an example? What do they sound like? They sound like... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like that. That's beautiful. Oh, I don't know how to do this. Birds are amazing. I, I, I yeah, they're that. like almost I competition. I love the sound of birds. Yeah. It, it makes you feel like the world's alive. Yeah, around. it does. I love that. Oh, man, I'm getting all emotional here. So when I sleep, I hear them yes. sometimes, but they don't go further. They sleep. And when they sleep, I sleep too. Yeah. Yeah, this is the last question and then we're gonna wrap up. When life on earth is through, everything's said and done, it's all done, and these bodies are gone and you're on the way to heaven and you're about to meet Jesus. <laughs> What's the first thing you wanna hear Jesus say to you? Wow. Man. It's deep, man. Well, I'm going to go. You go for Papa okay. Steve. You always first. Um, you have so much. I think if you say, <laughs> Jesus would say, "Well done, good and faithful servant." I think uh, you know we have we uh, we often have drama nights at the mm -hmm. centre, and the kids do dramas. Every time they do a drama about me, they do picking up paper because that's what I spend most of my time doing, picking up rubbish. I'd like to be remembered for 
raising someone from the dead or something <laughs> like that, but I do remember it for picking up rubbish. <coughs> but no, you know, just to say well done, good and faithful servant, I think is what I want to hear Jesus say to me, that Come on. you served him well. Yeah. yeah, that's the second time I hear that. Yeah. Someone said it on a pro front cast. Yes, the one you showed me yes, yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Who was that? I don't know. Well, <laughs> you, you, you haven't even met that person, so I'm trying to think it's, it uh, it's funny. I hope it was someone famous. Yeah. <laughs> Robert Yoon or something like that. <laughs> the so that would man. make you... <laughs> it was a heavenly man. Was it? It would, it would, <laughs> it would elevate you. I don't know. Anyways. Stop for the one. Yes. <laughs> There's always enough. <laughs> well, I like that one. I would vote that one. But since Papa Steve already you know, that talked that one, I would go on this one. Like, you made it. You know, mm. in that way. Yeah. Like, you have made it. Because I went through a lot of things that I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think I would believe that I would be in yeah. heaven. Things that try to take you know, off try the path. Off the part. So, yeah. so yeah. I think I would say you. I would love to hear that you made it. Wow. Yeah, you made it. Come on. <laughs> you made it, Pascal. Oh. <laughs> that one. Yes, you made it. Well, guys, thanks for sharing the story. Of this you, this is like a live testimony here. Here's Pascal. <laughs> Come through. You cared for him. Yeah, wow. Papa Steve. He's still having this artist coming up. There's more work yeah, to be done. There's, there's more to be done. There's 45 babies waiting for you guys yeah. in the <laughs> Come and visit. Come and visit. Yeah. And um, thanks for coming in, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Nathan. Great yeah, to be no, able to see you. Was, thanks, Pascal. Thank you, Papa Steve. Good job. Yeah, especially to talk for about. showing up and showing and showing off <laughs> the, the deeds of God. Oh, Come no. on. That's what I was. <laughs> That's very true. Yes. Shaka Baba. Yeah. Thank you, Whoa. Nathan, for the opportunity. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Guys, thanks for listening. Cheers. cheers. I can only hear some cheers here. Let's give you, come on, we're going to do one more oh, cheers. Yes. This is the good pen of water here. Yeah. Come on. Here we go. Cheers, big Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Woo. See you next time. Yeah. More Iris After Hours. Leave some comments below and um, we'll see you guys next time. Pleasure. This podcast is presented by Iris Global. For more information or to support the work of Iris Global, please visit us online at irisglobal.com.